Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell of I'm Just Sharing. Better late than never. I'm here today with blogger extraordinaire, although he may not see it that way, Brian D. Hawkins of Hot Blog Tips. Say greetings to the world, Brian. Greetings to the world, Brian. There you go. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and jump into this. This is going to be 30 to 45 minutes of stuff, and Brian is just pure entertainment. But we're going to start with this topic that I think is very interesting. Today is March, 20, March 30th, I think, March 30th, 2014. Last week we had something happen that was very interesting, and I want to get Brian's take on it. What do you think about this mess that regards my blog guest? This mess that regards my blog guests. Yeah. Oh, my blog guest. Oh, okay. You're talking about the uh, the hit from Google. Yeah. <sighs> I think we could pretty much see it coming on. Um, Ann Smarty is is the one running that. She does an awesome job. I personally, I feel that she got kind of thrown under the bus, if you will, by. Uh, by the big bad Google when without without really deserving it. I think I think it's a it's an awesome site. At the same time, it's it's within that realm that they've been targeting. With like uh, and it's not really a, a blog network, but it kind of operates looks like that from from a distance. And unfortunately, I think she, unfortunately I think that they're they're looking Google goes after the big sites like that without taking a lot of, uh, you know an in depth look at it and and my feel is maybe they're wait on the response so hopefully hopefully that she'll recover from that in fact I, I, I'm certain she will mm -hmm. that's my personal take I'm not even sure where you fall on that um, guest blogging Matt Cutts has gone on there and and said basically that I don't I don't want to put words in his mouth but to you know to kind of like guest blogging instead. I think guest blogging is not a good idea if you're just trying to go out there and build links to your blog for link authority, if you will. But it's, it's, a, it's an awesome way to go ahead and, and establish your credibility, establish yourself as an expert, and connect with people outside of your your uh, following, if you will, your, your blog readership. It's a way to expand your reach in that manner. So I think guest Blocking is here to stay. I don't care, you know, whether or not it, you know, as, as long as you stay relevant within your with your niche. I don't think it's really a, you know, it doesn't matter if it builds link authority or if it's going to pay it past page rank. Just do them non follow or whatever. I'm hearing a little bit of feedback. Are you getting that or no? No. <clears throat> okay, but that's my thoughts on it. What, 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 uh, am I completely on the opposite side as usual than, than you are, Rich? Well, no. Truthfully, I don't know. I'd never heard of my blog guest until that happened, so I didn't have an opinion on it. But there's a secondary thing that they did, which was different than what they've done in the past, is that they took down a lot of people who had posts on there. So, for instance, a friend of ours, Justin Germano, they basically, he lost all his page rank. So he went from, I think, a three or a four down to zero. And a lot of other people went down to zero at the same time. So that was something different because they used to just take down the specific network. And this time they actually went after people who, I, I don't know if he wrote something on that site or not, but he was linked to it. And so he and a whole bunch of other people lost their page rank as well. And and that's something else I think uh, Justin I'm sh I'm sure he'll recover from that quickly I believe um, because it's nothing but quality on either as either one of us blogs that I follow and um, you know he's got his personal blog is you know as well but it's 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 a shame you know they they go after mainly the big sites you know like before it was like easy articles and that type of thing and I've never known them to go after the individual user. And uh, other, other than you know, just uh, take away the the link. I hate this word, but link juice or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> you know, to take, to take that away is you know is a uh, um, you know authoritative link back to your site. Short of that, as far as penalizing them or removing them or de-indexing them, I've not known that to, to happen until recently, which is kind of scary. So you know, especially when we're looking at 
and I hate to even I hate to even bring up names and stuff, but since it's just you and me and nobody else is listening, or not that you don't have a following, but I'm going to pretend it's just you. And me. Um, you know, I, I I talked to I, and I know I know your your opinion on blog engage isn't the same as mine, but I I, 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 I privately talked with Brian and discussed this a little bit with him via email, and he's gone no follow. You know, to those of us that are blog engage members, we have stuff like Triber. Who knows? I mean, are they going to go after Triber next? Or what about um, you know the, the some of the social type things like clout and and that type of thing? Are, are, are what's what you know? This it's like there's no uh, no end to it. So I think we as bloggers just need to move on forward, continue with that without getting too obsessed over the big bad Google, and just do what we can to provide our readership. Viewers, listeners, whatever it is that we're in, in whatever type of content we're providing, just to give the the most value that we can, make the connections as strong as we can, and let you know let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, and and now you've brought up something that's interesting to talk about that I was going to get to at some point, but we might as well get there now, which is this thing about knowing how to market or promote your own stuff so that you don't necessarily need to worry about Google. And, you know, I just had my 1500th post on my blog. Congratulations, and, by the way, I've seen that. Say what? Congratulations, by the way, I've seen that. That's awesome. Oh, thanks. Well, one of the things that I recognized when I was trying to write 300 posts a, a year, which I, I did for the first three years, is that I didn't have any time to really market anything and give any time for someone to actually find one specific post and have time to read it and comment it on whatever so it may have been a bit of overwhelm but even now that I'm giving it more time I don't think I'm the best at marketing and I'm not sure you know how good you are or what you think about this I know that we have to get it out in other places but how do you think there's the balance between not doing enough and overkill well, I believe, you know, I mean, if you follow follow the thought leaders on this, it's like 20% creating content and 80% marketing and, and everything behind the scenes. So, you know, that whole 80-20 deal. But the um, my personal thought is I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing what I should do. You know, I, I, I publish a post. Or I'll tweet it out. I'll put, you know, a link on um, – Google Plus to follow it. I haven't even been doing the Pinterest thing, and the, there's there's a ton of things that we can do, and I need to get back into some of that. But after a point, when you when you work work it in the beginning of your you know the launch of your blog, and you start to build a you know a following, if you will, a, a, a loyal readership like you have on uh, I'm just sharing dot com, and you start to publish people. Before it was everybody was subscribing via feed reader, you know, subscribing to your feed, your RSS feed, and I think that's still around, but it's not as popular as it was at a point at a one point or another. So we get out there and you know socialize via other blogs or social media, and that doesn't really. I mean, that's not really like sending traffic to your blog. That's what we like to you know that traffic, the big T. But what that's doing is it's letting letting the people that we connect with know that hey, there's new content on there, and people will go and click on the link and go and read it and comment on it, and share it, and uh, the larger our network and the and the stronger our relationships, I think are more important than just getting out there and posting your link all over the internet because that just doesn't. Do it. If it's not a give and take, give like well, Gary Vanderchuk's uh, latest book, Jab, 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 Right Hook. It's basically give, 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 take. So give value, share other people's resources, and what you know, and promote your stuff. You know, like one out of every five or ten times or something. This everything shouldn't just be about our. Our blog and 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 our uh, content that we're trying to promote, but uh, you know we have to we have to uh, be fair and and provide that quality content on our blog 
and then share quality content with those that we're connected with. I mean, if 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 they're if they're writing junk, don't share it because that's your reputation. That's kind of you know. But you know, if we need to try to do our due the diligence on that type of thing, but it's really tough, time constraint and everything. Oh yeah, and there's the whole thing. I mean, I'm good on Twitter, but truthfully. I may have one of those kind of uh, time periods where maybe once every couple of days I can get on Twitter for maybe an hour and I go through tons of links, uh, you know, sometimes even a couple of days back and look for things that I think are interesting and take a look at first and then I'll share. And I will share a ton of things and at that time then I will share also some of my links, but I'm very inconsistent with it. But I do share you know, a lot of things with a lot of other people there, but I'm not as good on Google+. Plus. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why. Well, yeah, I do know why. Because I get better response on Twitter than I ever do on Google+. Plus. I still think there's that, where there's a lot of people moving to Google+, Plus for business purposes, but I still don't see the kind of re interaction that I see on Twitter. I, I You know, I kind of... I went on this little 90-day trial period thing where I stepped away from everything, including Facebook, and uh, went to Google+, Twitter, and YouTube. Just those three. It's all I was focusing on. I, I, I mean, I took Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, all of the other major networks right off of my phone and my Nook and everything. There's, Of course, I can still you know check in on my personal account on Facebook or whatever on my you know on my browser but and I and I honestly only do that you know briefly for a couple of times a week and I have to, to kind of do that because my wife tells me to but sort <laughs> to that as just um I was always Twitter was always at the top of the list on my social network referrals for hotblogtips.com now that I've been concentrating on just those three YouTube Twitter and Google Plus Recently, within the, like the last month, Google Plus has passed up by a long shot Twitter, and I haven't slowed down on Twitter. So Twitter's still a, a major factor, a major you know factor in in quality traffic back to the blog. But Google Plus has has for the first time actually passed that up, and um, I, I I believe it's just. It's just one of those deals that takes it takes a little while. I mean, we, it's in a sense, it's not a numbers game. We see a lot of people with um, twenty thousand or fifty thousand people that have circled them on Google Plus, and then you scroll down their their profile or their their page, whichever you're looking at, and you'll see almost no interaction. You know, like one, two, three plus ones, no comments, no shares, and 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 that's because they just went with the numbers and they forgot the the number one rule, that engagement, that socialization, that, that building your reputation and your influence via real connections for, by connecting with these people. And that's kind of what I focused on because I was spread so thin trying to do these the same thing that we know we need to do on Google+, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. I even downloaded that Snapchat even though I never <laughs> snapped it yet before in my life. I mean, I was just, and it's like, where does it end? I mean, I didn't, you know, the Pat Flynn be everywhere. It's, it's working fine for him, I guess, but with me and having a full-time, more than a full-time job on the side, uh, I was just, you know, we threw three hours or three or four hours of sleep every night. I couldn't keep up, so I decided to focus on those three, and then I'll move on from there. So what I'm getting at is I think Google Plus for our our niche, or at least for HotBlogTips.com, there's quite a few quality connections I can make. Now, I'm not going to say that with every type of niche. You know, if I had a, um, you know, a plumbing business or something, that may not. You know, I think you should still be there, but that may not be the number one way to to build traffic to your uh, to your local website. You know, Facebook still may be the, the way to go with something like that. But for hotblogtips.com and the techie type of niche and everything that, that, that I enjoy, I think that uh, Google Plus is just rocking it right now. Yeah. And and maybe it, it'll be the thing for me at some point. Right now it's not it's not even in my top 20 refers of all things, believe it or not. So I get more referrals from your site than I do from Google Plus. Hey, <laughs> <there you> <laughs> So, let's talk a little bit about you and blogging. 
when did you actually start blogging and what got you to start? I started I started blogging back black when I back when I was stopped being a blacksmith in like eighteen fifty. <laughs> I feel like I've been doing it forever. I don't even know the, the exact year. I think I started a little finance site, which was not big at all, in 2002 or something. And I think it might have been 2004. I'm really bad with time. I, I can't I can't believe we're at the end of March of 2014. This is way too fast. But 2004, 2006, at one point I decided to turn that into a blog. And I if, at first I thought, it really sucked because I went from a, and back then I was all into the page ranking stuff and Alexa and all. I could care less now, but I went. I dropped from a PR five on Google to a to a three, and uh, everybody, you know, I, I right now we know that you know the the, the blog and the interaction and everything helps everything, but at the time it seemed so I. But it was a lot easier to run, you know, rather than a content, I mean, a, a HTML site. And then I started a couple other blogs. And the next thing I know, I had a half a dozen blogs. And just like this, this is before we got real big with social media and everything. So it wasn't, it was kind of like still in the same boat as what we have with the social media now, where you just don't have enough hours in the day to maintain everything. But it was so easy to start a blog. It was amazing. The mm -hmm. problem is, is keeping it going and keeping a following and staying true to your content and, and, and your message, your overall message. And then, um, you know, if you want to take that to the next level to actually profit from that blog. So I, I, I'm not really sure where it started. I'm going to say on a serious level, you know, with a, you know maybe with um, Extreme Easing that I had is no longer around, maybe 2006 maybe 2005 or something where I really could would call myself a blogger and and before those I even was on a blog spot when that you know for a long time and a couple <laughs> of those and then I moved those to WordPress eventually so when you had the finance site this is an interesting question what did you really know about finance to have a finance site or a finance blog uh, because, you know, we know that you're a truck driver, but did you really have this background, or did you do research and then write articles after that research? Both. I had an interest, but not a, a, a high level of expertise on it. Now, you know, I, um, I'm really going to be dating myself back here, but in the 80s, I, uh, I don't, it's not around anymore, and I don't know if you ever heard of it, that A.L. Williams, but this is like one of the first things, and I was in my mid 20s my early 20s and I and I, it was a, my first experience with uh, let me do the quote thing you know online business and it was a network marketing type thing but it had to do with insurance and uh, you know ter life life insurance term and that type of thing and then we moved on and started looking at investments and everything and so what I would go in as I would go in you know as a internet marketer or not internet marketer network marketer multi-level marketing that type of thing and, and I would go in there, you know, and you, you know, bother all your friends and family and stuff. But we would go in there and show people how to basically like put your kids through college without, you know, by the age of 18 and when they're, or when, when, you know, when they graduate high school. And by the time they graduate college, you've basically sent them to school for free because, you know, the, the way you're investing, you're starting out early and then, you know, and, you're basically sending them to college, you know, with with the uh, with the interest that you're earning from those investments and that type of thing, and that kind of led me into an interest, you know, with the, and then I started following, you know, uh, actually listened to Dave Ramsey, well as an over the road truck driver. He was in Nashville. He was, he was syndicated, but he wasn't big time like he is now. It was a radio show out of Nashville, and it was like one on one, one hundred thousand watt stations that I could get from a long ways. And I made it a point. I mean, I, I, w I loved his show so much. I would I would drop down or go up and, and reroute m myself so that I could get through Nashville and listen to it during the time of his show. So following guys like Dave Ramsey and that, and it was just an interest. I never became an expert at it, but you don't really need to become an expert to be a blogger, you you have to have some interest and some passion in it, and have in in the you know to be able to do the research and 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 sometimes bring on other people. So if I had a 
for example, if I wanted to blog about leadership, I would probably knock on Mitch Mitchell's door and say, hey, you want to you wanna do a hangout or maybe a, a recording, a podcast, whatever, or would you like to uh, put a little blurb, blurb or something on this post that I'm writing about leadership? Because you're the expert in that field, not not me. But I can I can still share that content with, with the readership. And it's one of those interesting questions because – there's so many posts out there by a lot of different bloggers who say write about something that you can make money in when we both know that there's a lot of people writing stuff they don't know anything about. And one of my gripes is sometimes going to a blog with a topic that looks interesting and seeing this exact same thing I've read somewhere else with maybe a few words changed. And I'm of the opinion that... Um, if people don't write on something that they're really interested in or know in some fashion, then it just sounds dull and they can't really be doing any business whatsoever. And a lot of times you see those blogs die. And I hate seeing blogs that just die. <laughs> and and there's a high turnover, to be honest. And, and I think it, that falls right back into the passion. If you have the passion for the topic, for the niche that you're, that you're, you're going to be able to – and you enjoy what you're doing. When the times are tough and you, the traffic's hard, and you know the hours are long, you're gonna be more like more likely to stick with it. But if it's something, and 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 I'm guilty of this as well. I've had a ton of blogs. I was all into the niche blogging, and I had some of my blogs doing really well. It was they were paying really well through via AdSense and affiliate sales, and and this is before Google panned and. Uh, the uh, latest Google updates that kicked us all to the curb, and and that just kind of fell apart. But honestly, that was a good thing. That I didn't have a problem. I mean, I had a financial issue with it, but overall, that was a good move on Google's part. Uh, it, it upset a lot of people, but you know what? When when I would set up a niche blog, like um, one of the bigger ones that I had was with this. Uh, Obama had this um, uh, appliance rebate thing, and and I got lucky and and was listening and paying attention to the trends and, and the news and all that, and I got a really a great .dot com name, which was a big deal before these updates, to get that that those keywords within your URL. It's not so much anymore, and and I put content on there. And started getting a lot of, you know, very, you know, it's like, I think the first month it was like $350 or something in AdSense clicks off that one site alone. And then it just grew from there. And, and that, um, the whole point in that website was to get you to click off. So <laughs> I wanted you to find me on search and I was like number one on Yahoo and then within the first page on Google. So I, was, I wanted you to click come to my site and click off, you know, click one of those AdSense links. So, I, you know, we couldn't point to it or, you know, there's certain rules and I was playing by the rules, but the whole point was not to provide any real value to the site visitor, but to get them to tell them just enough to where they didn't have enough information and needed to click on one of those ads to, to continue to, to, to find a solution to the problem. And, that's not that's not the way to run a blog or a website. So the, that was, in my opinion, that was a good move on Google's part to get rid of those sites like I had that was just there just to make a profit and not really giving any value at all to the visitor. And i got to admit, I remember when that was a big thing for a lot of people, and in my mind I said, I don't really want to just create a site just to get people to click, you know, but there were a lot of people promoting that, saying you could have 50 sites of this kind of thing and be making thousands of dollars off of Google. And my mind said, well, that's not really blogging. I, you know, uh, <laughs> well, it's kind of niche blogging. I, I had like 130 domains, and it was so easy. I mean, it was insanely easy. I could spend, you know, a day putting a putting a blog together, put up like three posts, and and these, by the way, aren't even. I mean, I. I don't even, reluctant to even call it a blog. It's on it's on the WordPress and platform and such. But I would turn comments off and everything. You couldn't even tell it was a blog. And a day putting a you know one together, a little bit of sharing, you know, a, you know, put it out there and promote it a little bit, 
and walk away from this thing. It's just like it didn't take any more upkeep, so I could move on to the next one. And like once, maybe once a week, and then once a month, I might go and do a little update or something on it, just and 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 send out some more links. And other than that, it wasn't you know it was very easy. It was it was it was too easy almost to resist. For those of us that liked money, you know, so <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad it's gone. You know, it's just you know it hurt really bad, made me cry a little bit. I was you know I turned all the lights off and grabbed me a bottle of Jack and went in the corner and just turned the lights off and cried in the corner oh for a days. <laughs> in a fetal position, you know. But after that, I got over it and I'm like, okay, let's move on with the, uh, the, to be a real blogger for like, again, you know, because hey, you know, the, the, it's not all out to money. We want the money, but we want a solid foundation, like we were talking about before, where Google's not going to come crashing down on to, on a roof and just put everything to a fast, swift death. Cool. Now let's let's ask this one. Tomorrow, I have a post coming out on my business blog that is actually my 3,500th blog post out of all the blogs that I have. And I tell a story in that post, just a real brief story, on the fact that I had like 165 posts out there and then my host crashed, totally crashed, and I thought I'd lost it all. And someone on Rise.com recommended, hey, go look at Google's cache. Maybe you can recover. And so I recovered a lot of those articles, but I had to think at the time, do I want to go forward, do I want to continue blogging or not? You know, is this a sign? And in my mind, I said, you know, I think I still have things to say, so I continued blogging, and that was back in 2006. Well, you went through kind of your own little thing for a while there with Hot Blog Tips, I believe, because uh, I'm remembering, I think, back in 2009 where I almost wrote for you for a month because you were thinking about getting out of it or maybe selling it or whatever. What was it that got you to that point, and what was it that made you decide, you know what, I still want to blog some more? There, there's, there's a couple of issues there. I had found, like I just mentioned, another way of making earning a lot more money with outside of the traditional blogging thing, which was the niche blogging, which is gone now. I also found that I'm not that bad at internet marketing. And I had a decent list, and I could bring in a little bit of profit in that, that way, too. And I was having some health issues, so some serious health issues at the, at the time. So I thought, you know what, I don't have time for all this, and my whole attitude changed. And it's like, okay, I can't keep playing with this. I'm going to have to, you know, do something quick. Because, I mean, honestly, without getting too in, in depth on that, I actually got, you know, placed on the liver transplant list. So I was, I was like, okay. wow. yeah. And I think this is this is like an exclusive for you, Mitch, because I don't think I've ever publicly announced that. So, but it's all is good now. Everything's fine. It's all recover. You know, I never got somebody else's liver. I have my own that I was born with, and everything's good. And you know, and things have improved a lot. But days was getting kind of dark there, you know. And, and you get to the point like, why am I doing this? You know, I, I mean, I'm working 60, 70 hours a week, five days a week, and then I wake up in every weekend for like 16 hours straight. I'm sitting at this computer doing all this blogging and stuff, and really to what end? And the profits weren't there, and then I found a couple different avenues to where I could turn the, turn it into profit without, you know, without the slow pace of growing a solid foundation underneath a traditional blog. But then something else happens. You you start to see the money coming in, and but there's no real true connection. There's no there's no, and and it's just it sounds strange to even say this, but you don't have the connection. You know, it's it's just like it's it's just like you may as well have a mail order business in the back of a magazine or something. It's that impersonal, you know. So I I really missed the blogging, and I didn't know I would. You know, I didn't realize that I enjoyed it to the point to the level that I had so I did I sold off a couple of my blogs I was fortunate enough to get hot blog tips back that was not my primary blog at the time sold it got it back sold a couple other ones including my primary blog that's gone now but hot blog tips has been my number one priority since it came back and that was and that was think also th thankful or thanks to Google because I was already looking at it and like why am I doing this now you know I'm, I'm, I'm doing better you know physically and everything and I, it's just really dark you know it's just, just boring and then Google slapped this sense right into me 
and here we are. <laughs> it's something that you and I think I think you stopped before me that I was doing on my finance blog was accepting guest posts. Uh, because your ranking for a while there was really, really high, but you probably you had a lot of guest posting on your site, and it was probably easier for you because you do have the full time job to basically have some of that to help intersperse, and that's what I was looking at at my finance blog. I mean, I'm an independent consultant, but I had other work to do, and so it was nice, you know, having all these people who wanted to write, but at a certain point, it just got irritating with all the stuff that you had to go through in dealing with it. Um, you know, how did, did you come to that decision for that reason or did you have a different reason for coming to that decision? And by the way, do you think it's a good decision based on what happened last week? It didn't have anything to do with, with, with Google at all. It didn't have anything to do with, you know, what the trend that we're seeing today. It had to do with as far as guest blogging, I can put together a post. I'm slow. I type with this finger. I think you're only on the monitor, but I see with this finger, and this is my, you know, shift key. So I, I type very slow. Actually, I'm pretty. I know where they're all. I'm pretty quick considering I'm using one and a half fingers. But if I can do a blog post, I can actually type the content if I, if I, you know, if I'm in a groove and stuff within an hour, you know, something. And I'm big on images, so I have to, uh, you know, I, I choose my own images and create my own images or shoot my own photos for the most part. And that includes a guest post. So I would have to, I would take, you know, all the requests, which was becoming overwhelming. It was as bad as spam. You know, I mean, the, I'm talking, I, I swear, it, it got into dozens of requests every day to guest blog on hot blog tips and it just turned into this huge headache and then with everyone that I would approve I had to go in there and check out check them out if I didn't already know them and then I would have to verify what they sent me via copy Skype or something trying or copy scape and try to see make sure this isn't something that they've already blogged 15 times before and then they're trying to push it out on onto my readers and then I was, you know, any type of keyword research, um, checking the links, and then creating an image, and then formatting it and all that. And I'm like, you know what? By the time I get a guest post blog or guest post out there, I've spent more time on it than I would have if I had did it myself. And I don't want to be <clears> – I'm not – you know, the perfect writer, but in a lot of cases I can do a better job in my own mind for the way that I am and on my blog I thought – a lot of the quality seemed to drop depending on who you're allowing on there. So then I went to an invite only and I put on, on the uh, the guest post page and my contact page page where it said I'm, I'm not allowing any new guest bloggers and it will be on an invite only. So if I ask somebody to guest post on Hot Blog Tips, we're good. But if, if not, don't bother asking. Well, that didn't even slow down the spam. I mean, or the, you know, the, it's just continuously, I mean, it's like, okay, this is huge. So maybe I'll put this in like an H2 tag or something. They can't miss it. It's not just a bolded out little thing. It's just like, this is like the title of the page. Don't spam me with your, it didn't, it didn't help. You know, I'm, I still get them today. So, you know, and I have a little, um, uh, what do we call it, a label on um, uh, Gmail. And everything I just, and it's called rejected. And I don't even read them anymore. I don't care who it's from. Bill Gates sent me one. I might open it up. But I'll, I'll take in and I'll just, you know, move it to the rejected column and I don't even open them up anymore. So it's just, uh, it's but just. But you know why we get them though? We get them because there are websites out there that are geared to people who want to guest post. And your, your link is on there saying this site accepts guest posts. And. You know, the thing is, I had a guest posting policy on there, and part of the guest posting policy said, you have to write to Mitch. If you don't write to Mitch, I'm going to delete it, because obviously you've never been to the blog. And they just ignored it, and all these things were coming in, and I was bouncing all these things away, saying, you know, go away, but they just kept coming. And then one guy actually put my name in it, and I said, well, I'm not accepting guest posts any longer. He says, well, you're on this page. I don't care. <laughs> I didn't put it there. 
And and uh, I had I have you know I had uh, the I guess post policy as well. And one of those one of my big pet peeves was you need to respond to comments. The person that wrote the post needs to respond to comments. Don't just ignore the readership. That's important to me. So I always make sure, and and anytime I would accept somebody to be to post, I would always. And I had it, uh, you know, it's already like a canned response type thing to where I would just put it right into the post. It read the same every time, and it went through all the terms. And I would say, if you agree to these terms, we can move forward. If not, you know, nice chatting with you. And so every one of them would agree to it. And that was the one section that was, like, bolded, you know, it's like top of the list, bolded out, you must. Res and I was amazed at how many people would, you know, let it go live and never ever come back. <coughs> and I got to the point to where I'm like, okay, you know what? And I would send them a, a you know a couple of courtesy messages. Hey, um, this thing's been live. We don't treat our readership like this. Don't ignore them, please. So come back and respond to some of these comments. Comments would come in, and they would. I, eventually, I got to the point. I'd go in there. I'd change the password. I changed their image, their link, and everything. And I would put, and I would put on there. I'm so sorry. We don't treat our, our, our readership like this. The guest uh, writer is is not welcome here anymore. And 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 I hate to go ahead and like air the air it you know in public like that. But I wanted people to understand it's it's not going to be allowed. And you can't you can't just you know, it's just not you know when you were trying to create you know a hundred guest posts in a week. Leave me out. I don't want anything to do with it. So and I would remove all their links. And I would put, you know, a picture. It's just like a, you know, like a little standard picture without, it wouldn't even show them anymore because their email was no longer in it. And then I would always send them because that's the kind of person I am. It's like, hey, look what I just did to you, okay? <laughs> and the funny thing is the first person I did tell that to, and I, I swear I'm this close to saying her name, I still today get spammed with her guest posts. She never responded. You know, I even sent it back to her, and she's one of these people, and she's got a common face. The funny thing is, I seen that same lady on one of Elaine's posts, and I and I and and I sent it to. I said, you know what? That's the exact same picture, but a different name, and 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 it's oh. the same person. So it's just like it's not a bot; it's a person. But she's just like got these couple identities or whatever that you know personas that she's using to do all this guest post, and just you know, and she's she's just just sending it all out. So. Yeah, it, it's irritating, and and having to go in and remove it's just more time. So we're done with that. Thank goodness for that. Next question: the blog image that I took and I put it on my blog, and you have it on yours. Tell people about that, and tell me how you think the movement has gone, or what you think about it. Well, I, you know, I had this. Uh this idea a while ago that we we see this um, I'm sorry am I, am I still on now? Yeah you're still on. Because my I'm trying to find the, the website now. <laughs> so, yeah, it's freeblogimage.com so I had this, uh, is it, this is how bad I am at this stuff. I couldn't even remember the URL of it. And I thought I just I thought I when I exited off of a tab I thought I lost us because we're usually not on a tab and for some reason I am today. And I can't find you. But anyway, I'll find you. And and so I we have an image for like the RSS feed and then we got the little, you know, icons for Twitter and you know, Facebook and Google Plus and everything. It's all nice and unique and stuff, and you can t look at the little icon and know what you're doing. So you know, on the social share buttons or within the, uh, within the, uh, um, you know, the links that we would, you know, send somebody to our profiles, we can recognize that image because it's shared, you know, through everywhere and it's all uniform. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we had an image like that for blogging to represent bloggers and blogging? So I started this thing and I didn't charge anything for it. I created an image for bloggers and put it on freeblogimage.com but then and I don't remember what it was but I eventually found and I just, I just put it up there for you. I don't know if you can see the screen. That was your post on the universal blogging symbol. Oh okay yeah alright thanks. I, I, I lost you for a second. I, 
you got such a different browser. I thought, oh, did you do that? No, that's my. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I that little blog image right there that you see, where it's the red, you know, thing. It's, it resembles my uh, logo. I just put that out there so bloggers could use that image any way they want. They can edit it, change the colors of it. You know, they can they can put it on their logo without permission. They don't need it's like. Um, you know, it's open to whoever wants to do it, open source, whatever you want to call it. And I would like to, I, I, it'd be awesome if that just became the norm, you know, and people took it and I don't even need the credit for it. I don't, I don't, I'm not, certainly not going to profit off of it. I just wanted to give something back to the community. Now it turns out a couple years ago that somebody else did the same thing. And that's out there and I, forgive me, I, I don't remember the the URL or whatever it was called, but it, it kind of looked like a, an RSS feed type of logo. And I wasn't even aware of that at the time. So I wasn't the first one to come up with this idea. And it, But it looks like it was just about as successful as theirs was. Because <laughs> I created this image. I created a Google Plus page on it, a YouTube account, Twitter account, all this stuff, you know, everything just like if it was going to be a real blog, but I wasn't going to blog on there. I just wanted to use those, you know, just to, to get the word out, and it just fell on deaf ears. And I think I think part of that may be my communication skills, because I know even on that blog post that you just showed, a lot of people are having a hard time understanding the concept or exactly what in the world I'm talking about. And that seems to be a little bit of a trend with, my, with when, I, when I'm discussing something, I'll get comments, and it's like, I just wrote 1,100 words explaining this thing, and not even my own wife knows what in the world I just said. So <laughs> that's something, an area where I could use a little bit of improvement on, I think, some communication, especially since I'm going to start podcasting soon, and I think I, I probably need to work on that. Well, at least I put it on my blog. So you got one person who's using it. I, and I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if anybody wants to, you know, to if if they're looking for a logo or you know something to a foundation or something, if you will, on designing a logo, feel free. Freebloggimage.com. There's download links. You can take it. You even get a. You can even download a high quality uh, Photoshop. You know, what is it? Dot p whatever it is for Photoshop, but you can go and take that and, you know, it's, it has all the layers and colors and all that, and you can, you know, edit it in any way you want, add to it, take the word block off of there, but, you know, it's just, I, you know, I, I, I don't care. I, I, I'd appreciate it if you didn't, like, defame it with, you know, swear words or something like that. Or, you know, <laughs> trash it up. But, yeah, short of that, you know, feel free. Cool. <laughs> so now you're getting close to a time where, you know, we don't want to overdo, but I want you to answer this one here. You guys have the Hot Blog Tips Hangouts. You have the YouTube page. I was a part of that for a while. I watched the one that you did earlier. And I have been of the opinion that there's a way to integrate all of these things into blogging to try to offer people, a, you know, a lot more ways to consume your information and, you know, different ways. You know, like on my site, I have that uh, thing where people can click on it to listen to, you know, what I have. And occasionally I add uh, videos to it. And it seems as though it's just not really an idea that's catching on with a lot of people to add, you know, I know you're talking about the podcast and you love podcasts. And I love YouTube, but I like to download the videos or just, you know, uh, put them on watch later and then I can listen to them at a later time. But do you think that for blogging, as we go into the future, to really succeed or to be so, you know, as strong as I still think it is, that we're going to have to figure out how to integrate all of these things, uh, what Paul Myers used to call the, the thud factor? Or do you think that the written word will always be strong enough to carry things on its own? Yes and no. It, it depends on where your prospective follower or reader or listener or viewer or customer, client, where they are in the moment. And, and it's, there's always trends going on and 
we'll we'll have to uh, stay on top of what's working, and we need to validate what works and what doesn't. And a lot of that is by trial trial and error, like I've been doing with uh, Hot Blog Tips. The written word is cool. I mean, we've had it forever, right? So, but I don't think that that's gonna, in a lot of cases, be enough when when growth is going on around us and we ignore every other form of content distribution or content creation, if you will. So I think it's important to grow, and sometimes we can move forward even and let everybody catch up. So we, you know, the three of us, the Hot Blog Tips Hangout crew, and and it, actually it was four of us when we started with Ben from uh, QuickBlogTips.com, and then yourself and me and Cheryl Locke from Fuzzy Wuzzy Annapels. And we did this, and I have no idea, I, I think over 200 Hangouts we did together. That really wasn't catching on, you know. I mean, we're, we're at the same time we were also doing um, tutorials and how-to videos, and those were what were really getting the traffic and the views and everything as far as as YouTube. And I understand that to a point because a lot of these are last, you know, it's tough to sit down and, you know, I was talking about you know, a, a time restraint before and when you're busy and all of a sudden you're watching a hangout and this thing goes on for half an hour, 45 minutes, hour, oh my god, some of them's two hours long. It's like, you know what, I'm sorry, but I can't, I don't have time for this. You know, and I, I, it's, I'm, it's not because I need to turn it on the TV and watch, you know, a sitcom. It's because I gotta go to sleep at some point, you know. And um, so I understand a lot of that and at a certain point I thought, you know what, we're wasting a whole lot of time between the three of us, and we probably should, you know, slow this down and step back, and not necessarily walk away from it entirely, but step back and take a look at it and see what we're doing. For me, the number one priority should be providing content. If the viewer isn't getting value from it in their own mind, it comes to a point you have to sit back and say, you know what, maybe they're right. So we got away from that a little bit, and we're not doing any just hangouts just to be doing weekly hangouts anymore. It's, it's, and I don't think hangouts are going to go away. It's a nice, easy way for people to do video, and I think it's awesome. It's a cool feature of uh, Google Plus and YouTube. But I don't, th I don't know that we should do it just, just for the sake of doing it. You know, if if it's accepted by the masses that we're trying to connect with that's fine. If not, sometimes we got to take a look at it. But I don't think by any means that we should stop doing the video if if we can manage to get that done and get our message across, as well as podcasts. So with hotblogtips.com, I want to integrate the written word, like you put it, with the blog posts. I've done a little bit of slide share um, with the image, you know, it's image sharing, like with Pinterest and Instagram and all that. That's great. YouTube. And, and other video sharing type of uh, websites. Podcasting is something that we're going to get into very shortly here. And wherever I can get my message across and bring in, you know, more connections, solid connections, I'm going to do it. So, you know, and if it fails, it fails. You know, we just move on and try something different. But in the, in the meantime, just sit and idle and only doing stuff. I'm sure that it works for some some areas, you know, every now and then I'll run across a, a blog and it's just like, okay, every blog post is 2,500 words, it's all print, there's not even a single image on there, it's just all basic, you know, that's fine, I mean, if that's that's what they want to do and, uh, and they're getting what they want out of it, that's fine, you know, it's uh, it's all really about what we're, what we're trying to gain from our effort. Good point. Okay, here's the final thing. You get to close the show. What would you like to tell people about blogging in general? You know, why blog, why to stick to it, how to stick to it, and talk about the websites, the uh, everything that's about you. Hot blog tips, website, hot blog tips, whatever you want to promote. This is your time. You're closing it out. I would my my message would be blog. If you want to blog, don't don't feel you that you need to. Don't do it for the search instance engines. Don't do it for the recognition. I, I preach um, influence and reputation all the time. Blogging is a fantastic way to, you know, lend yourself as as an influential or a leader or, 
you know, into is a, I hate to even say this, but, you know, to show that you're an expert in your field, that's kind of, everybody says that. Blogging is a great way to get your message out and, and to make connections, but if, don't, don't do it for the wrong reasons. With that said, don't, don't let, every, don't let anything stop you if that's what you want to do. Don't worry about, you know, everybody says, well, you know, you got to pick a, you know, an area, you know, get with the long tail keywords and find something with less competition. Screw that. Sorry, sorry for that. But, you know, if you, if you want finance, if you, if you're into finance, write about, talk about finance. If that's what you enjoy, do it. You know, don't worry about that. There's 10,000 other websites that's like mega websites doing it. You know, just do it if that's, if that's where you enjoy it. And don't don't let the uh, lack of uh, knowledge slow it down either. Just get started, get it going. Don't worry about you know if you don't understand something, go to YouTube, do a search, find it out, connect with some of your uh, your online friends, and figure this thing out as you go. I think a lot of bloggers tend to wait too long to get moving because they're waiting for everything to be perfect. And truth is, there's nothing will ever be perfect to get this thing going. So. I just encourage anybody if you want to blog, be a blog. You know, and don't worry about pro bloggers. And I'm not not talking about you know pro blogger dot net or not. That's the same. But just just go out there and 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 do what you want to do and make the connections and get your message out. It's important to you. It's going to be important to other people. And if you get the traffic, you know, then and, and it blows up and just takes off. That's fantastic. If it doesn't, who cares? And you can find me at hotblogtips.com. I've got that almost everywhere. You can find, you know, Google and all that stuff or, or Google uh, Hot Blog Tips and I'll be there. Twitter's Hot Blog Tips. Facebook, YouTube, Hot Blog Tips. Everything's Hot Blog Tips. I live and dream Hot Blog Tips. <laughs> he even has a picture, folks, that says Hot Blog Tips. If you ever go back and look at any of the early Google uh, Hangouts that we did, he has a picture on his wall, or had a picture on the wall, that said hot blog tips. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I have one on order right now. It's a curtain. <laughs> it's a logo using the, the free blog image deal thing there, and it's 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 going to be on fabric and hang behind me if I ever decide to use it. But I have the other one, and I just, I just keep that put up for now. That is funny. Well, I want to thank Brian for being the first male to be interviewed here on I'm Just Sharing. It's about time. And, you know, someone now has stepped up to the plate. Um, I think this has been enjoyable. I think we've learned a lot. Thank you, Brian, so much for doing this. And, uh, you know, we may get to talk to Brian again. He's got a lot of knowledge on blogging. Check out his hotblogtips.com. And this is Mitch Mitchell. I'm just sharing, signing off. Thanks for, so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time. Thanks a lot. Bye now. <laughs>